Talk about any rock swipe bars. Mm -hmm. Again, how the process of how you figure out the rates and kind of a, just an overview of why they work so well compared to stock well, or even a Rubicon that has a, a sway bar disconnect. Well, basically, the original theory for the anti rock when you know we started the anti rock when the TJs came out. So, and the TJs had so much front sway bar, if, you know that. Um, basically go off-road, you would disconnect the front sway bar completely and only run the rear sway bar. And if you didn't run any sway bar, the Jeep would just have so much body roll, it was almost, it felt dangerous to drive. So originally, this is how the, the ANROC came about, was, is we we're noticing we we're off-roading in our TJs with no front sway bar, that the, the front end was doing all the travel on its own. And the rear end, because it had a sway bar, even though it was a small sway bar, it would actually control what the front end was doing. And the idea was to get a balance between the front and rear. So that's what the anti rock, that's what we're trying to do. So if I lift up the front wheel six inches, I want the rear wheel to like go down six inches and vice versa. So it goes from one corner to the other. So the right front's controlling the left rear and the left front's controlling the right rear. Right. So that, and that's the whole thing about the anti rock is trying to get a balance from front to rear. That, that when you're crawling over rocks, that you're keeping all the tires kind of planted. That it's not, uh, you know, it's not using all the front springs, that it's using the front and rear springs together. And then also the other advantage to the anti-rock is getting the amount of travel it has. The anti-rock was designed to run with the full travel, like your Jeep should end up with somewhere between 10 and 11 inches of travel. Well, the stock sway bar is, it won't, it, it won't actually travel that far, and if it does, it won't travel that far for long before stuff starts breaking. Right. So you notice a lot of guys will put the front sway bar on, and they'll leave the rear off, and then after a while they go, hey, hey, the bracket broke off the rear, the rear, rear, rear end because now the rear, the front sway bar is light, but the rear sway bar is heavier, or the rear sway bar because it may not be that it's heavy, it's that it does, it's, it's limited in its travel. So the less travel it has, then that rate is going to increase quicker. So it's going to be, like if I have a long arm, and let's say we have a rate, let's just say the rate was 500 pounds, you know, just for a number. Well, in the short arm, when it travels two inches, that rate would increase quicker than if you have a long arm. So it may be, you may get, you know, have the same rate, but it will actually travel a lot further without it without the rate ramping up as fast. Right, okay. So, so and it, and but the idea is to try to get a balance between front and rear. And then, you know, there's certain ones that we will spec out, you know, diameters we spec out for a, for a like a, a JK, you know, and a TJ, or the J JL is a little bit lighter. So like in the front of a JL, we're in a little bit lighter bar. We run like a 750 bar instead of a, seven, a 7850 bar. And then, the JL, the rear sway bar, works differently. Where the JK, the rear sway bar, mounts way at the back, and the arms go forward. And the JL, there's no, we couldn't, there's no room for it back there. So we mounted it ahead of the rear axle in a cross room that goes across the frame. So you know, because of that, you know, uh, we've run a, a little bit smaller diameter bar. But also in a JL, the one thing that you're feeling a lot when you're driving it, like on the street is the shocks have been moved way out on the JL compared to a JK. So in the back, in the front they're about in the same mm -hmm. spot. In the back they're wider. So when you're just going down the street and you're turning it back and forth, now that shock is stabilizing a, a more body roll. But like in a long corner, like sweeping corner, now you're gonna lay onto the, 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 uh, uh, the sway bar more. So, but you know, just driving it down the street, you, you actually feel a lot of that shock. That's why a lot of times the, with a the harsher shock in a JL, it will feel more harsh because the shocks are so wide on the axle. Or in the JK, it's only a few inches, but it's enough you're holding the, the axle out here instead of in here. And when it rocks back and forth, 
you you're actually feeling that because more, the shock more has, leverage. Yeah, has, you, yeah, you have the shock has more leverage on the body, right? Because right. it's wider. Right. And if you notice, like a J, your JK, the the uh, shock mounts on the inside of the frame, mm -hmm. in the back. On the JL, it mounts on the yeah. outside of the frame. And I've had guys, hey, I just can't get this. It, it just feels weird. It feels like it has too much rear, rear sway bar. And I go, well, it's not the sway bar you're actually feeling. It's the shock you're feeling because the shock's mounted on the outside of the frame. So that initial little bump, you know, may actually feel different mm -hmm. because that shock is further out. So. Well, it's certainly going to have an effect on handling on the highway, yep. especially the feel. Mm.